So this is Bossa Nova Rhythms Part 2. And in Part 1, we had looked at some jazz voicings that you'll typically see in a lot of jazz standards and applied that to a Bossa Nova style of comping. Um, that was sort of a simplified version that we did in Part 1 where we were just getting into some of the syncopation um, and the accents on uh, beats one that you typically see with this style. So today we're just going to look at some more typical chords, um, some very typical major and minor two five ones, and then we'll make that uh, rhythm comping a little bit more difficult. And this would be a, a little bit more interesting. So let's go over the chords that we're using first. Uh, many of these shapes will be familiar from last time. And then we'll just take a look at the right hand rhythms that we're using in this case. So we're starting with what's known as a major 2-5-1. And basically that means that we're starting on the 2 chord of a particular key. So in this case, we're going to end up resolving to some kind of E-flat major chord. So you could say this is in the key of E-flat. So we're starting off on the 2 chord, which would be F. So in this case, I'm going to play an F minor 9, which is just an extension. So you could think of it as functioning as an F minor 7. And so you notice we've got the second finger here on the eighth fret of the fifth string, first finger on the sixth fret of the fourth string, and the third and fourth finger here on the eighth fret of the second and third string. So I'll try to be good about naming those frets since we don't have any markings on the uh, nylon string guitar. So there's an F minor 9, and then we're going to go to a 5 chord. So this would be the 5 of that E flat major that we're going to resolve to. So for this, we're going to play a B flat 13. And so that's another extension that you could think of over a dominant 7 chord. So in this case, I've got the first finger on the 6th string on the 6th fret, second finger on the 4th string 6th fret, third finger going to the 7th fret of the 3rd string, and fourth finger going to the 8th fret of the 2nd string. And that's going to give me my B flat 13. And then I'm going to end uh, this section on an E flat major 9. And this I'm going to let go for two bars. And this is just a, an extension of a major 7 chord. So this is sort of the one chord that we're resolving to. So here I've got the second finger on the 6th fret of the 5th string, first finger on the 5th fret of the 4th string, third finger on the 6th fret of the 2nd string, and fourth finger on the 7th fret of the 3rd string. And you can see these fingerings in the tab at the beginning of the video also. And so that chord basically has all the important notes in it. It leaves out the 5th. So that's an E flat major 9. So that gives us our major 2-5-1. Then we also have a minor 2-5-1 in this progression as well. And this is going to be a minor 2-5-1 in D. So we're going to start on the 2 chord of minor, which um, is always a minor 7 flat 5. Um, and so in this case, it's going to be an E minor 7 flat 5. You could also call this an E um, half diminished chord. And so that's going to be right here, the first finger on the 7th fret of the 5th string, the second finger on the 7th fret of the 3rd string, third finger on the eighth fret of the fourth string, and fourth finger on the eighth fret of the second string. So that gives me an E minor 7 flat 5. Now I'm going to go to an altered dominant chord. And so as we discussed in part one, when you're in a minor 2-5-1, you have to alter those dominant chords. So in this case, we're going to have an A7 flat 13 chord. The only difference between that and that B flat 13 that we played is basically I'm going to take this fourth finger and drag it back a fret. So we're here in A. So the first finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the sixth string. Second finger is fifth fret of the fourth string. And then the third and fourth fingers are on the sixth fret of the third and second string. So that gives me an A7 flat 13 chord, which is an altered dominant. And then I'm going to end on basically a D minor 9 chord. So that's the same um, extension that we have with that F. Now we're in D. So I'll have the second finger on the uh, fifth fret of the fifth string. First finger's back here on the uh, third fret of the fourth string. And the third and fourth fingers are also on the fifth fret, uh, third and second string. So those are all the chords that we'll be using and that you'll notice that I played um, in the example at the beginning. So I'm going to teach you how to play exactly what I played uh, at the beginning of the clip. So now with the rhythm that we're doing, um, basically every chord is going to have one bar to itself except for that E flat major 9 which we'll go ahead and give two bars to.
but we're going to basically have a two measure pattern so it'll change between chords. So on this F uh, minor 9 chord, here's the pattern that I'm going to be playing. One more time. What I'm doing is I'm hitting with the thumb and the fingers, the middle four strings, and then I'm cutting off those uh, treble notes just like we did uh, in part one where I'm muting them and then I'm hitting it again on uh, beat two. Then on the end of two, we're going to drop this second finger down and grab the fifth of the chord. So that's the eighth fret there on the sixth string, so I'm grabbing a C note because that's the fifth of F. And then I immediately come up and hit the treble strings again with my fingers, and then I'm going to also hit on the last eighth note of the bar. So I have... See that notation on the tab at the beginning. So the only place that we really cut off um, any notes, like with the staccato style, is that first beat. Everything else is just sort of strummed through. Now we're going to have a different rhythm when we go to the next bar on this B flat 13 chord. For this, we're going to start with the bass note, just with the thumb and then pluck the rest of the chord on the and of one. Then on beat three, we'll go ahead and hit the whole chord and then mute those top notes. And then we're going to let the chord strike through again on beat four. So basically there, my bass notes are just playing half notes. One, two, three, four. And I just have a little bit of syncopation in the treble notes. So now we're going to go to our E flat major 9 chord, and that's going to have both of these patterns in it because it's going to go for two bars. So there's the chord, and I'll start out with. Now notice the second finger drops down to grab that fifth. So there's the first bar of it. And then I'll go back up to the root note and then drop it back down. So there's the second bar where I hit the bass note first. Then I drop it down to the fifth and pluck like that. So those two measures. One more time. So in context, let's play that whole major two, five, one. Then go into the major nine. ready for the minor 2-5-1 that comes next. So I'm going to go up to my E minor 7 flat 5. I've got the first pattern that we looked at. Now here's an interesting thing. Notice the name of the chord, E minor 7 flat 5. So the 5 is flatted. So that means that instead of dropping my bass down to the normal 5th like I've been doing on my 5 string chords, I've got to drop back a fret because this would be a B. The flat 5 of E would be a B flat. So I've got to drag my first finger back here to the 6th fret of that 6th string. So in that case, I'm just dropping back a fret to grab that. Then I'm going to take that bass note down one more to A to grab the A7 flat 13 and do that second pattern. So together that looks like this. going to end up on the D minor 7. Now we're going to do something a little different on this uh, D minor 7. Um, instead of holding that for two bars like we did the other uh, one chord that we went back to, we're going to throw a little cadence on here. So we're just going to go. So notice for the second pattern, I went back up to that E minor 7 flat 5 and then to the A7 flat 13, but I did it in just one measure. So we went to the E and then jumped down for beats three and four to that A7 flat 13. Then I'm gonna go back to the D uh, minor nine chord and do it again. And then I'll end on that chord. So that's sort of a way of uh, putting a tag on the end of a song is to take that cadence, whether it's a major or minor 2-5-1, and sort of squeeze the chords 
uh, into one measure. So I've basically instead of having four beats per chord, just two. So let's take our progression now and we'll play it at half speed using this bossa pattern. And now you've got a little bit more complicated of a bossa pattern, so get that right hand going, and you should look pretty convincing. Hi, this is Sharon Isbin, and I'm going to chat a bit about the Lauro Waltz number three. <laughs> so it's really important to feel the offbeat accent. Sort of a rhythmic counterpoint, you have a lot going on. Now when this repeats, I do it softer. <laughs> 